Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, June 19th, otherwise known as Juneteenth. I hope you are at home today and not having to work. I'm Lana Harris. This is the First Alert Desk. I want to make sure you are caught up on all your headlines for today. Also, an update on the forecast. It has been wet and rainy, and that's what we're in for all week. So we're going to have Courtney Jacobazzi explain that to you in just a couple of minutes. But let's jump into the headlines, especially if you are in Sandy Springs. You should really listen to this right now. There is a boil water advisory that is still in effect right now. Okay, so we can show you a map of where this all applies to. Um, there was a breach at the 48 inch water main at Riverside Road and Old Alabama Road. Crews worked all morning to repair it and they began wrapping that up about an hour ago. The Atlanta Department of Watershed Management actually issued that notice yesterday afternoon. So now water pressure is being restored very slowly but surely. But people are still being advised to boil your water before you use it. That's for anything. You're cooking, you're brushing your teeth, drinking, anything. It is out of an abundance of caution to protect your health. We're told. Um, Atlanta Watershed says they will be testing the water to make sure it's not contaminated, but in the meantime, it's just better safe than sorry. So um, again, that's for you in Sandy Springs, and I'll pop this map up one more time just so you can see where that area all encompasses. Pretty big area there in Sandy Springs for you. Okay, our next story is out of Gwinnett County, a scary story, and the witness accounts we got were pretty jarring there. It's a, a killer, an alleged killer that police there in Gwinnett County are on the hunt for right now. The shooting happened in Grayson and it actually initially prompted a SWAT situation yesterday. So police tell us that the suspected shooter lives at the home where this shooting happens. So we've got some scene video for you here. It's a neighborhood off of Cooper Road. Police haven't given us a lot of information right now. It's possibly because they don't want to tip off the shooter as to what all they know right now. But again, here's some from the scene yesterday. It's Roseberry Lane. Police tell us it was a little after 12 noon when officers responded to a call that someone had been shot. When they got there, unfortunately, the victim was already dead. Now they initially activated SWAT thinking the shooter might still be in the house, but they eventually determined that he was not. We spoke to a neighbor who did give us that really chilling account of what he saw and what he heard. Here's that. The shot. So I came running up here just to make sure everything was all right. But a lady was in the street screaming, they killed my husband, they killed my husband. So I kept going and literally the man was laid out front of the front door on the sidewalk. Pretty much gone already. His sister, his niece, another lady and his wife was out here literally trying to help them. And the people right here next door um, actually came out and she is a nurse. She started CPR. I ran to the house to get towels to try to stop the bleeding, um, but it was a little too late. I just pray for the family. The family was really devastated. Just an awful and sad situation. Now, police will only tell us at this time that it was a domestic situation between two parties. We will keep pressing today to see if they're able to let us know anything else. But again, we think there's possibly, you know, just a reason behind being so um, tight lipped about the details here. Maybe they're trying to hold some things close until they find that suspected shooter. In the meantime, it was a really sad kind of weekend across the country. It was Juneteenth. It was Father's Day weekend. It was supposed to be a time to celebrate, but there were a lot of shootings across our country that left people dead, left a lot of people hurt, and it includes here in Atlanta as well. So we'll get you to some video of some of the places across the country where this happened, uh, people's loved ones just became victims of mass shootings. At least six people were killed. Dozens of people are in the hospital today, including five people from Atlanta. So the mass shootings happened in St. Louis, Washington State, Central Pennsylvania, Southern California, Baltimore, and Willowbrook, Illinois. It's a suburban Chicago neighborhood. Now there, one person died and at least 23 people were shot as hundreds of people we're trying to celebrate Juneteenth. Back here at home, you might have seen this video online. Uh, this happened in DeKalb County. Police are investigating a shooting that injured five people at a nightclub. This happened during a concert after party at the Cosmopolitan Premier Lounge off of Glenwood Road. Now, in that video posted to social media, you can hear several gunshots going off. You can see people ducking, running for cover, scared, frantic. Police tell us this morning that a fight outside of the club is what led to that shooting. So we can tell you the victims are still recovering in the hospital. Really hard to hear what happened across our country and, and here in our state, in our city over the weekend. 
Another big story that we're still following, big strike could impact all of us because who doesn't get deliveries these days, right? We are inching closer to possibly one of the biggest labor walkouts since the 1950s, okay? Long time. If no agreement is reached, UPS delivery drivers say they are prepared to walk off the job. It puts everybody's future deliveries at risk here. So it's the wrong video that I'm playing here. That's the, the last one. So members of the Teamsters Union, which represents about 340,000 workers at UPS, voted overwhelmingly on Friday that they are prepared to strike. The workers want better pay, more full-time jobs, better working conditions, like air conditioning in their box trucks. Who wouldn't think they had air conditioning as they're rolling around in that heat? Now, so far, there has been agreement reached on AC for trucks, so they're going to get that. It's the other terms that are still under negotiation. But hey, about one in four packages shipped in our country are handled by this company. That is 24 million packages a day. So when we say this could impact you, really anybody who orders something would be impacted by this strike if it happens. So we'll keep an update, keep you updated on that. Hey, what would you do if you came across somebody who is unresponsive on the ground? Do you know CPR? Would you know how to help? Because if you have a flight coming up, maybe you can. This is pretty cool, okay? Um, you know, instead of going shopping at the airport or reading your book or getting a snack, you could learn how to give somebody CPR. It's over at gate 12. It's a hands only CPR kiosk. So, you know, no mouth to mouth over here, but you get videos and a mannequin to teach you CPR in about five minutes. The mannequin actually gives feedback as far as the depth you're pressing down, how fast you're doing the compressions, if your hand is in the right place, all of that and all of those factors do influence how effective the CPR is. But according to the American Heart Association, every year there are more than 350,000 cardiac arrests that happen out of the hospital here in our country. And research shows that when early interventions like CPR or like a defibrillator are used, the survival rate is doubled or even tripled. So this is really important that people know how to do CPR. It's life-saving. You'd know how to jump in if a situation got dire. And again, five minutes at the airport, who doesn't have five minutes at the airport? Usually you're so early sitting around trying to figure out something to do. Learn how to save a life. Last one, as always, it's kind of a weird one. Young thug, what is he up to? Okay, he's got a countdown clock on his Instagram page. Two more days until we find out what it is, okay? Nobody really has any clue about what this is counting down to. It could signal new music is coming. I thought it'd be nice if it signaled when they would finally sit a single juror in the court case he's still facing. He's still facing those RICO charges at the Fulton County Courthouse, and court does resume pretty soon. But how ominous is that? It's almost as ominous as the sky, Courtney. It's been a heck of a segue there. Right. Does Young Thug know something we don't? I but, mean, yeah, two days. What's happening in two yeah, days, Young know. Thug? All right. <laughs> Time will tell, I guess. Time will tell. But yes, it does look ominous out there. We have uh, quite the rainy setup over the next several days. So grab the umbrella, pack your patience on your commute to work. A lot of you probably didn't have to work today, but if you did, it's pretty rainy out there this morning. So uh, you want to, or it was rainy out there this morning. So you just want to be careful, you know, take it easy out there on the roadways as we set up. Really quickly, are you trying to find my Max? I am trying to find your Max. I, I, I got it. Yeah. About it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> right here. I'm just there sabotaging Courtney. Oh, Don't okay. mind me, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> totally okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, we are just making sure we're all set up. Oh, that would uh, not be the right little area for that. There we go. Okay. Hang tight, everybody. Please and thank you. We are going to get this put together for you so you can we can take you through the forecast. There we go. Cool. All right. So um, live look out over the airport. It is also quite gloomy out there. Starting to see at least some hints of sunshine there. I uh, hope your morning's off to a good start, everyone. I'm First Alert Meteorologist Courtney Jacobazzi. Uh, while we're kind of dealing with the dry slot right now, that's not going to be the case for the rest of the day. We will start to see rain and storm activity pick back up. So let's talk about it. Um, it is warm. It is muggy out there. Dew point in the upper 60s. Yuck. That's sticky. So as you step outside, if you haven't yet today, for those of you who might be taking it a little slower going out to work today or 
being off work today, I should say. Uh, it's pretty muggy out there. So as we go through the day today, we are going to watch for a few more scattered showers that are going to roll in. You might notice all of this is kind of spinning. All the rain and storm activity is almost spinning. Well, we have this upper level low that's moving into our area, and I'll kind of talk about that in a little more detail in just a couple of minutes. But it's going to create rounds of showers and thunderstorms starting today through most of the week. So as you're headed home from work today, if you are heading to work, Expect the chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms. We're kind of in a dry slot between now and about 2 p.m. And then we'll start to ramp up that coverage of showers and thunderstorms for the evening. Could maybe have a strong storm or two. Um, we do have a level one severe threat today, meaning isolated severe storms are possible. Uh, but the threat looks extremely low for us. We'll really be watching for the storms that pop up in the heat of the day. So early evening hours, we'll be watching for maybe an isolated strong to severe storm with gusty wind, maybe some small hail. And of course, all that heavy rain that we experienced this morning. Good news is for those of you who are headed back to work tomorrow, um, the morning should be dry. So your morning commute won't look anything like it did this morning, uh, but we will ramp up that coverage of rain for the afternoon and evening. So kids at summer camp uh, as you're headed home from work tomorrow, maybe you have some dinner plans on your Tuesday night. Prepare for that widespread chance for showers and thunderstorms. I'm not looking at any severe threat tomorrow, but we will watch for maybe a storm on the stronger side with gusty wind being the primary threat. Maybe some small hail with the heat of the day. So something we'll be watching for. As we go through the week, take a look at this. We have a first alert for today for the rain and storms, and then we keep that coverage of rain high through the week. Again, that upper level low is going to kind of sit over us. So essentially what is happening is this low developed what we call a cutoff low. So it kind of cut itself off from the mean flow of uh, the jet stream of the atmosphere. And this is getting steered into our forecast by the jet stream out to our west in Texas. They're underneath this really strong ridge of high pressure. That area of high pressure is making Texas very hot. Yesterday, it feels like temperatures in places like Corpus Christi of 120 plus degrees. So they are extremely hot out there. And what happens is these storms fire up along the periphery of that ridge. And now this cutoff low developed in lieu of that and is going to rush in, usher in lots of Gulf moisture. You see all the green and blue color there? That's moisture that is just going to linger over our area starting today and that will continue again through Thursday. We're trying to be optimistic that this front or this front that this low lifts by Friday and that would bring in a drier trend for us for the weekend. Not completely dry for the weekend, but at least a drier trend. Um, so we're going to keep our fingers crossed on that. This low is going to kind of settle in here. It's being blocked by an area of high pressure to our north. So when you have these blocking patterns set up, they can be really hard to get out of. So that's something we're going to be watching. Um, but in the meantime, today alone at the airport, we've already picked up close to an inch of rain. We're going to add another two to maybe four inches on top of that with some locally heavy amounts possible. So flash flooding will be a concern, especially as we head into Thursday, um, Wednesday and Thursday, because the ground is going to be getting even more saturated. So that rain's not going to have anywhere to go. It won't be able to go into the ground. It'll sit at the surface. So um, we will be watching for some flash flooding through the week, especially as we get into that Wednesday, Thursday timeframe, which does look to be the rainiest days for us. Um, this week will be Wednesday and Thursday. Quickly want to take you out to far out in the Atlantic off the coast of Africa. The tropical development that is going on right now. Very, very rare for this time of year. This is more of like an October peak of hurricane season setup um, to have storms like this come off the African coast. Not generally typical this time of year. Usually we're watching things form more in the Caribbean or the Gulf as fronts come through and kind of stall and little lows develop along them. That's usually where we see this. Um, but here we are. We call this the MDR, the main development region. And uh, to have two back to back like this, this time of year, early in hurricane season, is quite rare, um, but we'll probably have a tropical depression later today. We'll get another update in the next two hours or so from the National Hurricane Center, um, or maybe the next hour. And um, then that could eventually turn into Brett, our second named storm of the season. The other storm trailing behind it, about a 40% chance of development. So there's something really interesting that could go on, and I'll show you the seven day in a second, but uh, I'm gonna give you a really fun weather word today. So there's something called the Fujiwara effect. Say that five times fast. Um, when two tropical, I guess, disturbances, tropical cyclones, when they get really close to each other, like they are, um, you can actually have the stronger one almost absorb that smaller storm. One model is hinting that that's going to happen with that chance of that uh, disturbance with a 40% chance of development, that the one that will be a tropical depression will actually get so strong that it'll actually kind of take over that second disturbance. Really interesting. We call it the Fujiwara effect. 
There's your fancy weather word for the day. Go impress your friends. Um, if that happens, we'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> but um, we, will, we are going to be watching those two little tropical, somewhat tropical disturbances that are out in the far Atlantic off the coast of Africa very carefully for you. And if it does form into a tropical depression, we'll let you know. And, of course, if it turns into Brett, we'll let you know. Right now, looking long range, it doesn't have any impact on the United States, but we'll still keep an eye on it. So rainy set up the next few days. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all first alerts, two to four inches of rain, some locally heavy amounts possible, so we will watch for flash flooding. Summer starts Wednesday. Boy, oh boy, is it going to be mild, 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 mid 70s. We should be in the mid 80s this time of year. Um, and then it looks like we'll finally have a transition day on Friday when that low starts to lift out. We're going to hope that happens so that we can dry out for the weekend. We are favoring that right now. Um, and then we'll go back into the mid to upper 80s for Saturday and Sunday. Um, so hang in there. It's going to be a wet week. Take it easy on the roads this morning. Even without people going to work at full capacity, the roads were a mess. So uh, can't stress enough to just take it easy out there. Thankfully, your commute tomorrow should be mainly dry, but definitely an unsettled week ahead of us with Wednesday and Thursday being those bullseye days where we're really going to have some pretty um, active weather with all of the rain falling. But it should just be rain Wednesday and Thursday, not any kind of severe weather threat. All right, everyone, I hope you have a wonderful day today. Um, we will catch you here later. We'll keep you posted on the forecast both on air, online, um, here at the First Alert Desk, the First Alert Weather app, also a great tool to have. And uh, we'll catch you here next time. Thanks so much for spending some time with us.